AMD launched a new GPU this week. N no, sadly I don't have one, but if the reviews are anything to go by, that doesn't seem like such a bad thing. In fact, this 5-year-old uh, RX 580, hell, even the 6-year-old RX 480, both have more features, more VRAM, and can even have more performance. So what the hell's going on? What, what's AMD playing at? Well, let me explain. First, I should make it clear that this video isn't excusing AMD for the 6500 XT, nor any attempt to convince you to buy one. This is purely some context and explanations, and basically a look at what makes GPUs so damn expensive. So, what do these cards have that the new $199, sorry, £250 card doesn't? How about half the memory. Yeah, in 2022, AMD had the guts to sell a brand new, completely redesigned GPU with four gigabytes of VRAM. Like, four gigabytes! Back in 2017, when the RX 580 launched, no one wanted the four gigabyte version of his, and that was five years ago! I mean, even AMD knew that it wasn't a good idea, as someone tried to quietly hide a blog post from 2020 about how 4 gb of VRAM isn't enough anymore, only to be caught and then called out on it and quietly reinstate it. As an aside, here I wouldn't attribute to malice what can be adequately described by incompetence, so well-wishing uh, moron hides blog post without thinking it through just hours before a launch makes more sense to me than multi-billion dollar company who's been designing a NAF card for at least a year hurriedly, maliciously removes a contradicting blog post just hours before the launch instead of months before when they definitely had the time to do so. Kind of makes more sense to me than the, the, the latter there. And actually, do you know what else is missing? Half the lanes to that memory too! This has a meager 64-bit bus instead of the already fairly slim 128-bit bus that the bigger Navi 23, the, the 6600 and 6600 XT has, which itself is only half of the 256-bit bus that the Navi 21 or the uh, 6900 XT, 6800 XT and 6800 has instead. And while we're talking about halves, how about quarters? Like the PCIe lanes. Yeah, this card has four PCIe lanes total. Now, they are Gen 4 lanes, so that's uh, gonna work great with, uh, oh, the just the last two generations of AMD or Intel CPUs. Nice. Hope you upgraded recently. But that's gotta be it, right? Wrong, it gets worse. Obviously you have, you well, less cores, but literally half? Just 1,024 from just 16 compute units compared to literally double in the 6600 XT. Hell, it even has 50% less cores than the last generation 5500 XT on top of half the memory and bus width. It also only has two display outputs from the GPU die, which Guess what? It's half of the last gen card. But do you want to know what the, the real kicker of a missing feature is? It's missing its video encoding engine. No more streaming for you! A feature present on this 5 year old card, or actually technically even on this 8 year old card, this HD70870, that's the feature that's on here is missing on a card launched in 2022. What is going on here? Well, in short, it's all about cost. Let's start with probably the most obvious one, the lack of memory. According to reports from mid last year, GDDR6 was set to skyrocket in price, and while this definitely is not even close to the prices that AMD will be paying, nor is it the same skew, it looks like Mauser has what I think is 1GB of GDDR6 modules listed for £22.50 each, which even with a hefty discount would clearly put a dent in the price tag, having to put 8GB instead of four. Of course, while the price of VRAM is an obvious place to look for AMD's cost-cutting measures here, I would argue that it's far from the biggest. 
See, by removing half the, the bus width, you now don't need all of those transistors to manage those inputs and process the data. By cutting the, the number of compute units in half, well, you pretty much have the number of transistors you need, well, especially for all those cores, but almost for the entire chip, and removing the encoding engine will save plenty too, as well removing those display outputs. All of those transistors you suddenly don't need, uh, they all kind of add up, as you then end up with a, a chip that is less than half the size or half the area, if nothing else, at just 107 millimeters squared, down from 237 millimeters squared on the 6600 and 6600 XT. Although it should be noted that the much better equipped 5500 XT's die area is only 158 millimeters squared, and in theory on the, the larger 7 nanometer process node rather than the newer 6 nanometer node that the 6500 XT uses. Okay, so you need fewer transistors. So what? Well, those transistors kind of have to come from somewhere, specifically some specially doped silicon on what's called a wafer. A perfectly doped and machined disk of silicon that through an insanely complicated collection of incredibly expensive machines is turned into chips for you to enjoy for your dinner. No, sorry, uh, wrong one. Uh, GPUs to, to be able to game on, right? Well, those wafers are uh, 300 millimeters in diameter and a rough spitballing of the Nabi 23 die plugged into a yield calculator with TSMC's seven nanometer defect density of 0.09 nets you just shy of 200 good dies and a further 45 defect dies. Now, those defect dies aren't necessarily dead, they're just not perfect, so let's assume at least some of them are, are fine and good enough to be called a 6600 or 6600 XT, and call it a nice round 200. Now, if we swap in a, a rough spitballing of the 6500 XT's Navi 24 die in, wow, you get 487 and 49 defect dies, so again, a, a little bit of rounding comes up to, uh, let's call it 500, 6500 XTs out of the same piece of silicon. That's 150% more dies. That's incredibly substantial. To give you some context, let's imagine, and again, this is wholly imaginary based on absolutely no research, it's uh, you know, entirely theory, the a wafer costs, say, £5,000. Well, with 200 working 6600 and 6600 XT dies, that works out to around £25 per die. But with 500? Well, that's just £10 per die instead, and would be one hell of a saving. When you tie that in with the rising cost of those wafers, I've seen reports of anywhere between 5 and 10%, even for the 6 or 7 nanometer process nodes at TSMC, and the likely case that AMD might have to pay a premium for more allocation than their multi-year agreement had listed, you then might start to see why such a, a small die might have been necessary to get to this price point. Of course, less I.O. and memory also means that the PCBs are cheaper and easier to produce, and there are just less components required, which is only likely pennies worth, but it, it does end up, well, adding up. But that doesn't mean that you should go and buy one, though. While it does seem like a, a good deal in today's insane world of used RX 5500 XTs, which were like £200 new just two years ago, being listed for £400 plus, pounds, it's important to see the bigger picture, which is that you're getting less performance and less features for the same or more money. And that's one hell of a shame. Like I said at the start, this video isn't about trying to convince you one way or the other. Uh, it's just a bit of an explanation about the die sizing, the uh, theoretical costs involved, and why this might be a, or sort of why AMD might have ended up going down this route. 
not necessarily justifying it or saying that they should have done anything you know differently uh, but with that said i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below what do you think of the 6500 xt from what you've seen what do you think about the uh, effectively the cutting out of features to be able to shrink the die size to then be able to you know in theory sell a cheaper card feel free to let me know in those comments down below if you want to see more videos like this one, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos, then you can do so directly through the YouTube join button or Patreon. You can also pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a load of other ones that I designed myself. Or you can also check out the less direct ways if you're buying from places like Amazon or Overclock GK. There's some affiliate links in the description down there for you. Uh, I might leave a link to a 6500 XT just to, for the sake of it, but uh, either way, feel free to check all of that out. I'll also leave some more videos on the end cards if you do want to, to keep watching. I have plenty for you to enjoy, so feel free to take a look. Otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.